Good morning students I hope you all are doing well this is your math teacher Shweta Bajaj Students please subscribe my channel if not subscribed yet and don't forget to mention your name class and section in the comment box for attendance Students we have started with our chapter 4 integers and in the previous video we learned how to add the integers using number line and without number line and in without number line we learned the rules which says that when the signs are different then we will find the difference and keep the sign of the larger number for example suppose we are having two integers minus 3 and 6 then what we will do we will subtract them and on subtracting 6 and 3 we will get 3 as our answer why because we have to keep the sign of the larger number and out of 3 and 6 6 is the larger number and when the signs are same then we simply add and keep the signs for example minus 3 and minus 6 are two integers then what we will do firstly we will add them and keep the sign keep the common sign and here the common sign is minus so our answer will be minus 9 now students after discussing this we will discuss properties of addition of integers successor and predecessor and we will start our exercise 4b so let's start now properties of addition of integers and the first is closer property it says that if a and b are any two integers then a plus b is also an integer or the sum of any two integers will always be an integer for example suppose we are having two integers 8 and 7 then on adding them what we will get we will get 15 as our answer where this 8 is an integer this 7 is an integer and this 15 is also an integer let us take one more example and in this example i am taking two integers as minus 3 and minus 7 and i will find out their sum now since both the integers are negative that means both the numbers will be added and on adding 3 and 7 what we will get we will get 10 as an answer and the sign the sign will be same or the common sign will come and here the common sign of the integers is minus so that means minus 10 will be an answer and minus 3 is an integer minus 7 is an integer and minus 10 is also an integer so from here what we learned we learned that on adding any two integers we will get always an integer hopefully closure property is clear to you now next is commutative property it says that for any two integers a and b a plus b is equals to b plus a or on adding two integers in any order our answer will be same for example suppose i have taken first integer as minus 5 and the other integer as 8 now on adding them see one is negative and other is positive so what we will do we will subtract them and on subtracting them what we will get we will get 3 as an answer and what sign we will take we will take the sign of larger number and out of 5 and 8 what is the larger number the larger number is 8 and here 8 is positive right now on changing the order of minus 5 and 8 how we can write we will write it as 8 plus minus 
Now here again one is positive, other is negative. So that means what we have to do? We have to find out their difference. And 8 minus 5 will give us 3 as an answer. And out of this 8 and 5 which is the larger one? La larger one is 8 and here 8 is positive. So that means our answer will be positive 3 or simply 3. So from here what we got? We got that minus 5 plus 8 is equals to 8 plus minus 5 is equals to 3. So from here what we learnt? We learnt that change of order does not change the sum of integers. Hopefully commutative property is clear to you. Now next is associative property. It says that for any three integers a, b and c inside the bracket a plus b bracket close plus c is equals to a plus inside the bracket b plus c. That means change of group doesn't change sum of integers. For example, suppose our a is 2 bracket open 2 plus and b is minus 3 bracket close plus and c is 4. Now firstly let us solve this. Now according to the board mass rule firstly we will solve the bracket and on solving the bracket see this 2 is positive this 3 is negative right one is positive other is negative that means what we will do we will subtract them and on subtracting 3 and 2 what we will get we will get 1 as the answer but here we have to consider consider the sign of the larger number and out of this 2 and 3 which is the larger number the larger is 3 and this 3 is negative. This 3 is negative. So that means in the answer we will take a negative sign. Now minus 1 plus 4. Now again one is negative and the other is positive. So that means what we will do? We will subtract them. And on subtracting 4 and 1 what we will get? We will get 3 as an answer. And out of this 1 and 4, which is the larger one? The larger one is 4. So that means we have to take the sign of 4. And here the sign of 4 is plus or positive. So that means our answer is positive 3 or plus 3 or simply 3. Hopefully this is clear to you and this is the essence of our example. Now let us take the RHS of an example and in RHS firstly we have to take A and here A is 2 plus bracket open inside the bracket B. What is the value of B we have taken? We have taken minus 3 plus what is the value of C? We have taken C as 4. Now solve this. On solving this, firstly we will solve the bracket according to our board mass rule. 2 plus, now see this is negative and this is positive. That means we have to subtract them and on subtracting 4 and 3, what we will get? We will get 1 as an answer and out of this 3 and 4, which is the larger one? The larger one is 4. And that 4 is positive. That means this 1 will be positive. Now 2 plus 1. 2 plus 1 will give us 3. Now see here LHS is equal to RHS. So this means inside the bracket 2 plus minus 3 bracket close plus 4 is same as 
2 plus inside the bracket minus 3 plus 4 bracket close is equals to 3. So from here what we have learnt? We have learnt that on changing the group of integers the sum of integers will not change or remain same. Hopefully associative property is also clear to you. Now next is additive identity. It says that for any integer a, a plus 0 is equals to a is equals to 0 plus a where 0 is known as the additive identity. Let's see with the help of an example. Suppose we are having a as minus 8 then minus 8 plus 0 will give us minus 8 as the answer or 0 plus minus 8 will be equals to minus 8. So from here what we got to learn that on adding 0 to any integer we will get our answer as the integer itself. Hopefully this property is also clear to you. Now next is additive inverse. It says that for any integer a there exists its opposite integer minus a such that a plus minus a is equal to 0 is equals to minus a plus a and here this minus a is the additive inverse of a. Let's see with the help of an example. Suppose we are having minus 5 then additive inverse of minus 5 will be 5. So on adding this 5 to minus 5 we will get 0 as the answer because one integer is negative and other is positive. So that means we have to subtract them. So 5 minus 5 will give us 0. Same way if I will take 5 plus inside the bracket minus 5 then also this 5 is positive, this is negative. That means we have to subtract them and 5 minus 5 will give us 0. So this means minus 5 is the additive inverse of 5 or 5 is the additive inverse of minus 5. Hopefully additive inverse is also clear to you. Students please write down here that 5 is the additive inverse of minus 5 and minus 5 is the additive inverse of 5. Hopefully it is clear to you. Now the next topic is successor and predecessors. So students just like whole numbers every integer has a successor and a predecessor. For any integer m, m minus 1 is the predecessor of m and m plus 1 is the successor of m. Suppose I am talking about 0, then its predecessor will be 0 minus 1. For predecessor we used to subtract 1. Now on subtracting 1 from 0 we will get minus 1. And for successor, what we have to do? We have to add 1 to the 0 and 0 plus 1 will give me 1 as the answer. Let's see one more example. Suppose you are having a number 8. Then for finding out its predecessor, what we will do? We will subtract 1 from 8 and on subtracting 1 from 8, what we will get? We will get 7 as the answer and for finding the successor of this 8, what we have to do? We have to add 1 to this 8 and on adding 1 to this 8, what we will get? We will get 9 as the answer. Hopefully it is clear now to students, you. students, next I have taken is question number 1 from exercise 4b and the question says that find the 
successor of first is minus 5. Now, in order to find out the successor of the given number, what we used to do? We used to add 1 to the given number. Now, here this 5 is negative and this one is positive. So, what we will do? We will subtract them and on subtracting 5 and 1, what we will get? We will get 4 as our answer. Now, in this case, which sign we will take? We will take the sign of the larger number and out of this 5 and 1, what is the larger number? The larger number is 5 and 5 here is negative. So, in our answer, we will put negative sign or minus sign. Therefore, minus 4 is the successor of minus 5. Hopefully, first part is clear to you. Now, next I have taken is sixth part. And in sixth part, we are having an integer minus 1. Now, in order to find out the successor of minus 1, what we will do? We will add 1 to the minus 1. Now, here this one is negative and other one is positive. So, in such a case, what we will do? We will find out their difference. And you know that students, 1 minus 1 will be equals to 0. So, here the successor of minus 1 will be 0. Hopefully, sixth part is also clear to you. Now, next I have taken is question number 2. And question number 2 says that find the predecessor of first part is minus 100. Now students, you know that in the case of predecessor, what we used to do? We used to subtract 1 from the given number or integer. Now here, students, this 100 is negative. This 1 is also negative, right? So, in such a case, when the signs are same, what we used to do? We used to add the numbers. Now, on adding 100 and 1, what we will get? We will get 101 and which sign we have to take? We have to take the common sign and here the common sign is minus. So, minus 101 is the predecessor of minus 100. Hopefully, question number 2, first part is also clear to you. Students, after discussing this, pause your video and note down your home task. And for any doubts and queries, you can leave your message in the comment section. I hope you like the video. Thank you.